everybody, thank you so much for joining me today. I'm doing my 2015 favorite beauty products. I'm gonna be doing a non-beauty version of this as well separately, but I thought it would just be a way too long video if I did them both together. But I hope you guys are excited about this year. I think this one's gonna be the best one yet and I just can't wait to see what it has in store. So the way that I narrowed down um, my favorite beauty products is based on what I use the most. And I really thought about products that I like found this year as well as products that have been around forever but I just happened to discover it this year or just ones that overall I felt like I just reached for the most. A lot of them are products that you guys have seen in a lot of my videos and a few of them might be somewhat newer but I will explain what I use them for as I go on. However, this is not a review video so I will not be re uh, reviewing any of these products. If I do have a review on them, I'll mention it and I will link that down below so you guys can find that review. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to go ahead and talk about a few makeup brushes first. This brush right here, which is the Sigma Tapered Highlighter F35 brush, has just sort of doubled over into being used for everything for me. I use this for my under eye highlight, I use this for my actual highlight, and I even use this to contour sometimes without even cleaning off the brush just because it ends up working out pretty well regardless, so I love this brush. Next is the Sigma Wide Shader E59. This is one of their synthetic brushes. and I just love it because it is pretty wide as you can see my eyes are not very large but I like it because it does the job very fast and the synthetic brushes feel really good on my eye it doesn't sort of hurt like sometimes natural bristle brushes are a little bit more rough around the edges um, and so those hurt a little bit more this one does not hurt at all so I like that it's very smooth to apply um, next this is my beauty junkie pro pencil brush this is a goat hair brush and I love this to do my lower lash line the reason I choose this over any other one is because this is natural um, hair. However, it's very soft still and it doesn't poke me. Sometimes the synthetic brushes are very stiff and therefore it's a bit of a harder brush and this requires you to go back and forth whereas eyeshadow brushes are flat and you just sort of get your whole eye shape by doing this. With this, you sometimes use the point so it has to be a brush that is comfortable to use and does not end up hurting you. So that is how I use that one. Um, and I think I have a discount code down below. I hope it's still valid because I reviewed their products a long, long time ago. Um, if it is valid, the coupon code will be down below. Then this one is a MAC 266 brush. It is an angled um, brow brush or eyeliner, whatever it is that you want to use it for. I like this a lot for my Anastasia Dip Brow Pomade because I find that a natural bristle brush is the one that is the best to put on such a product. I've used it before with synthetic fibers, but you just get way too much of the fiber and it doesn't look as good. So. I love this one. Next, on to the actual makeup products. I'm gonna save skincare and other randos for last. But foundation-wise, the Makeup Forever Matte Velvet Plus, love this foundation. It is a non-fail foundation for me. I have started to color correct though, and I find that that matches me even better now. But this, in general, without me color correcting, it manages to conceal all of my dark spots and does not make me look gray. So I love this. I'm in color 65. Then my Cover FX Custom Cover Drop, this is an N70 and it's a very neutral colored foundation. I think the product is awesome because it is, like I used the wrong word, it's not foundation. It's just pure pigment and you can mix this with other products to get your exact shade if you wish. This is a great product for makeup artists and for all of you, especially if you do have like skin problems, just discoloration, pigmentation, etc. If you want to, if you can't always find your foundation in just one bottle, which is pretty common these days, then you should get a product like this to mix in with it and just sort of make any foundation work for you. This has made so many of my other foundations work for me that I had sort of given up on, so love this product. I almost forgot this product, so I had to go and grab it. This is my Ben Nye um, Cream Blush. This is in the color Coral. I actually used this as my colored corrector around my chin and mouth area. So I basically cover this area right here um, with this before I go in with foundation and I find that works really well. Um, this is also to show you guys that you don't have to use a colored corrector. You can use any such product that is this color. I've used lipsticks before. You can use anything that you want. Just make sure it's a product that will blend with your cream or liquid foundation. So it has to be a cream consistency or liquid consistency. It cannot be a powder. So I love that. Very inexpensive as well. Next, the highlight that I have been using all year round and I love it is Becca Opal. So this is an interesting one because I thought it would never work for my skin color because it is so like silvery white looking but I love it. I have this on right now 
I've had this on pretty much in every single video that I've done this year. So love this. I have not tried Champagne Pop, but Becca in general, their um, their highlighters are the bomb. Like they literally look like you can you're, like you're glowing from eons away. So I just absolutely love it. Um, for my brow product, I was loving the Anastasia um, Brow Wiz, which I ran out of and I just haven't ordered it for some reason. But I started to use the Dipper Up Pomade again this whole year and I've been loving it. As you guys can see, I've literally used so much of this product. I've had this since April 2014 and this is still going strong. So it's a product that's going to last you a very long time. It's how I do my brows, how I've done my brows today. Very easy to use and I love it. Um, for blush, there's really only one blush that I think has truly stolen my heart this year that I think would look great on a lot of skin tones. I wouldn't say people who are too much darker than me, this might not show up, but people who are my skin tone are definitely lighter. This is NARS Craving Blush. It is in their wet dry blush collection and this is a highlighter, this is a blush, but I love the effect this gives me. It makes you just glow and I just love that. I've just been loving that whole like dewy sort of look. I'm not so much into super matte because I think I'm doing so many matte lips that I wanted something else on my skin. Um, so I've just been loving this. This is my NARS. One eyeshadow that I've been using for a bulk of the year that I've been loving is by Colourpop and it's called Get Lucky. This is a gold color and it literally looks wet when you put it on your eyelids and this is great for weddings, a lot of Indian weddings. Um, I use this on my brides and just in general if you want to get a real good pop of color, Colourpop's Colors are really good at doing that. They look, they're super, super pigmented and they always have that sort of foiled look. So it's great just to add on to something right on the center of your eyelids to get, to sort of catch the reflection of light. So love that. Next, there's only one other eyeshadow that I really love separately, which is this one called Caramel by Anastasia Beverly Hills. It is the perfect transition color for me. I just love red toned browns for my transition color. I find that browns that are more yellow or gray tend not to look good on me as your transition color. Of course, I use them in my crease in other ways, but the sort of shadow that you get right here and the warmth that you get from that is from this color and it is a um, red toned brown, which I love on my skin color. If you guys know what I'm talking about, this is gonna be a product that you will really love. It's called Caramel and you can buy that separately just the way I have. Next, an eyeshadow palette that I have literally been using all year round and it's broken is my Sleek Storm palette. Um, ugh, it's broken, but as you guys can tell, this brown is a non fail brown. I love this for my under eye region when I do my um, lower lash line eyeshadow. I love it for that. It's such a great shade for my skin tone, also a red tone brown. The black in here is super pigmented. It's the most pigmented black that I've ever owned in my life. Um, this is a really pretty transition color as well if I'm going for a very light colored eye. I think that looks really good on me. And these two are what I mixed together recently for my highlights. So the highlight that I have on right now is a mix of these two. Um, all year round though, I was just using this one as my highlight and this as an all over gold color. Um, overall, very pigmented, very affordable. And the reason for why I like this so much most of all is because it's so easy to carry. Of course, it's broken but that's probably because I am not very good at packing, so I probably just packed it in some stupid way. But I just like how small this is. It makes life very, very easy to, you know, travel with, and I'm always traveling, as you guys know. Next, my number one product of 2015 was hands down the Kat Von D Shade Light Palette. Oh, I had a coughing fit right there. So this palette is just the best. I cannot explain in words how much I love this but let me I'm gonna link the video to this down below because you guys can see how I highlight and contour there but these are the colors that you get in here I love this to bronze that's what I've been using today I have not used that but I've been using that to bronze the perimeters of my face it's not super dark um, that one is very comparable to Java by Anastasia Beverly Hills if you guys have that that's a good color to do as a contour this is a much darker contour that's the kind of look that you're going for but in general, this color and this one right here I use for my under eye. I find this yellow to not be that great. I'm not a huge fan of this yellow or the ABH one or any of the other ones, to be honest. I find that these types of colors tend to look better on me and not ashy. The yellows tend to look very ashy on my skin. So that is how I use that. 
This product is like such a winner. I would recommend this to everybody. And the cardboard packaging makes this very easy to travel with. I still find it very sleek. Um, and it feels good to me. It's not, it doesn't feel cheap to me. And I like that in my makeup products. Next, my beauty blender. This product is something that I sort of rediscovered this year. I've had this forever. Um, probably at least like eight or nine years, I would say. But I started to use a lot of brushes for my makeup, but now I have sort of gone into a more uh, a more complicated makeup routine, I guess I could say, and that requires a lot more blending, which I find that this is much better for than a brush. So I love that. And then I've been loving my Eggy case. This is a much more recent discovery, but I love this to travel with. It's meant for your beauty blender. It fits your beauty blender when it's dry and when it's wet, it's made you know, to, to be the perfect size for that. I will link the website for this down below if you guys are interested. A lot of you guys have asked me about it. I'm so sorry I didn't link that before, but I will link the website down below where you guys can purchase it. Um, the best part about this is that it keeps your sponge sanitary because I used to just throw my sponge into my makeup bag with all my other stuff and it has black marks on it as you guys just saw. It doesn't transfer into my face, but it still doesn't look like a normal beauty blender and gets dirty much more easily. So I find that really easy to uh, work with. Next, I have been having a really hard time finding a good lash glue um, to put on lashes with for my customers and for myself alike. And I've just recently started to use falsies on myself. I wasn't really doing that a whole lot before. I'm not wearing them today, but the lash glue that I am loving is the Velour Lash Glue. This stuff stays on. I love how easy it is to apply. And best of all, it does not have a nasty smell. That was my biggest issue with Ardell Lash Glue. It smelled like dead fish to me and... That, after a while, gets really nasty when you're applying them on your customers and, like, regardless. It just, I didn't like them. And this one is amazing. This one is by Vlora Lashes. You can get it at Sephora. Um, concealer. There's only one concealer that I discovered a long, long time ago in the beginning of this year that I've been using every single day. And that is the Urban Decay Naked Skin Concealer. In the region of concealers in general, I'm pretty hard to please. Um, for my under eye area because I don't like I I can't say I have a creasy under eye But in general things crease on me under my eyes So there's only one other concealer that I've ever used in my whole life Before this that I still love which is the MAC Pro Longwear um, Which if you guys like have seen my previous videos you guys know that I've recommended it like crazy I still would this one is just more pigmented and it's a little bit thicker So I like that for the, I guess the sort of phase of life that I'm in right now and the type of look that I like on myself but both of those are amazing. It's just this is the one that I discovered in February and I've been using it ever since. This is my second tube though, so these do go pretty fast. But the applicator on this is amazing. Next is my last my last two eye products and then I'm going to go into lip products. So um, an eyeliner that I've really been loving is my Stila Smudge Stick Waterproof Eyeliner in the color Stingray. So this one's interesting. I actually forgot my Urban Decay one when I went to New York. Um at the end of this year and I had to go grab something right so I picked up this one not thinking much of it but it really it's so dark on your eyes it's much darker than the Urban Decay one it's much softer to apply and it also comes off easier but it stays on when you want it to stay on it's really weird it's just the perfect eyeliner I love it go get it um, I, this, this one just blows the Urban Decay 24-7 out of the water lastly my Too Faced Better Than Sex Mascara I discovered this probably Either in the beginning of last year, no, I think I got it for Christmas, actually, two years ago, and I've been loving it ever since. This is the best mascara out there, hands down. I have not found something better. If you guys have another thing that you think is great, link that down below, let me know. Um, but this is kind of expensive. I think it's $22, but it just makes your lashes look amazing, and I don't know. It changes the way my face looks, so I love this. This is the Better Than Sex by Too Faced. Then, this year was the year of lip products for me by far. I discovered uh, liquid matte lipsticks and I love them just because I'm not a huge gloss girl. I never really was. And so I like the way nude and matte lips look on me. But this year I discovered mauve tones and even reds and like darker colors. But here are my last few makeup products, which are lip products. So lip liners, first is Soar by MAC. This is one of the two Kylie Jenner lip, uh, lip liners that everyone's raving about. I love this. It looks beautiful on my skin tone. You might think that it's too pink, but it's actually incredibly flattering. Love that one. And then Whirl is definitely just amazing. Um, this is very mauve toned. It's very neutral. It can almost go into the nude lip as well. 
You can build upon it to get a pinker look also. So I just love this. I wear this every day. I would say for the last at least six months, I've been wearing this every day, but I did discover this last year, and I have this on right now too. Next, the liquid lipstick of the year for me has been my Kat Von D Lolita lipstick. So I was on the wait list last year. I finally got it in, loved it then, love it even more now. It's just the perfect, perfect color for me. It's very light, very nude, great for every day. Um, I will say I, I can tell that it's not the most expensive formula because it's very thin and it's not going to last all day by any means. You have to keep reapplying this. I think that has a lot to do with the color though. If you do wear a darker color, it will stain and it won't be that way. But this color is not going to last all day, but it looks beautiful. So love that. Next, the color that I just, I just love the consistency of this. This is the Stila Stay All Day uh, Liquid Lipstick and this is um, the color Amore and this is what it looks like i love this i do find that it somehow looks different on me day by day i don't know how this is a mauve toned purple ish color but it has glitter in it or shimmer however that does not transfer into my lips i don't see it doesn't look like glittery and it's very hard for something to look glittery because it dries matte um the the most exciting thing about this that the applicator of this is amazing it feels so good on your lips you feel like you're using a very expensive product and it's the exact same price as all the other liquid lipsticks so i don't know what stila has done but the color is beautiful the consistency is amazing i think i'm going to do a, a whole video on liquid lipsticks but i think i own pretty much all the the big brands that people talk of so i wanted to kind of give you guys my thoughts on that um and then for a couple of lipsticks whirl lipstick is basically the exact same color as Whirl Lip Liner, or so they say, but I think it's very hard to make the exact same thing. Um, to me, it's pretty much the same, but I can't say it's the exact same. However, it looks beautiful. It's a perfect mauve nude. Um, it's a color that doesn't require anything extra. You don't have to wear a lip liner with it. It just looks so good on my skin tone. I think it would look beautiful on uh, lighter skin people and darker skin people. Darker skin people, it'll look very nude on you, and lighter skin people, it'll look like a brown mauve. Um, it's really like that Kylie Jenner look, so you can have it in an easier form with a lipstick. Then Verve lipstick, I'm obsessed with this. This is more mauve than Whirl, but they are definitely the same family. This can be a little bit darker than you might be used to, but I mean, I think it's super wearable when you're wearing a very simple eye, so I love that one. And lastly, it is my Illamasqua Buff lipstick. This is super, super nude but in a very different way. It's a purple gray nude. So it has that sort of slaty sort of look. It's not a peach nude or a pink nude. It's definitely a gray nude. There's a very big difference between that. And for people who don't like that, you're definitely not gonna like this, but I love it. So that is it for beauty products. I'm gonna go on to just a few skincare, hair care products. I don't have a whole lot, but let me get into it. So here is my Mint Julep Lip Scrub by uh, Lush. I bought this last year as well. So this is basically essential if you're using a lot of matte uh, lipsticks or things that basically are going to stay on your lips a pretty long time that are used to sort of capturing your lips and just sticking on because this helps to sort of remove all the debris from your lips even if you use a ton of lip products. So love this. This one is by Lush. Next is my skin exfoliator for my face. This is Ole Hendrickson Walnut Complexion Scrub. I've been using this for a couple of years now. I recommended this to my sister and my cousin and they both love it also. It's very simple. I love the smell of walnut. It just feels really fresh, really clean. It's, it's not that expensive. It's about $20 and it does last you quite a long time. So that is my, uh, my face exfoliator that I love. Then for a um, uh, moisturizer, the Glossier Moisturizer. I've been using this all year long ever since I discovered this back in January. So love this product it's very simple it's not super super moisturizing for those so for those of you super dry girls i don't know this would be enough for you i am oily skin sometimes combinations this does a pretty good job for me very simple it does not do anything extra it's just a moisturizer um then for my face masks i've been okay first of all i've been really bad about skincare this whole year you guys have been complimenting me on my skin thank you so much but i have done nothing Maybe sometimes that proves that maybe you don't have to do so much always to look good. But the big thing that I've been doing is just drinking a ton of water. That has become huge for me. My food, my diet is, I don't even want to get into it because I'm, I'm a pretty bad eater. 
but the one thing that I've been doing that I've noticed about my skin is that my skin's been getting a lot more dry in these past few years than it ever has before. So when I'm really sort of roughhousing my skin and not eating well, eating a lot of chocolate, stuff like that, then my skin, it shows when I get really bumpy and very dry. So to sort of resurrect that, the moisturizing moon mask by Glossier has saved my life. I never in a million years thought that I would want to put on something on my face that is super hydrating but I do have to now because my skin does get into those you know phases so I love this I have a whole review on this I will link that down below so that way you guys can check it out to see if it's something that you would want to get um next to take off all my makeup I use the Bioderma CBM H2O this is a French product it is now available on Beautylish as far as I know it's the only US like real store that you know sells it because other than that I was getting it on Amazon Beautylish is pretty cheap for this also and what this is is a non-rinse face wash so I basically put this on cotton pads and wipe my whole face down and I feel like that takes off all my makeup my skin remains looking good and I find this to be a lot less harsh than makeup wipes and a lot more affordable than makeup wipes too because a wipe you use it once to throw it away with this you're able to sort of you know like not use as much um I have gone through bottles and bottles and bottles of this though but it's an awesome awesome product Next, perfume. There's only one perfume that I've been using for probably about 3-4 years now and that is the Prada Infusion Iris. I love this perfume. It's more masculine than most perfumes, but that's just what I like more. I don't like very floral, super feminine scents. That's just not me. And this, I mean it is feminine, but it's musky, which I think lends that sort of masculine smell. So I like that. It's very clean. I'm not about like excessive scents. I'm not a big perfume wearer. I just wear this when I'm going out and that's about it. Other than that, I smell wonderful anyways. I don't need it. Um, the last and last but not least is my Bumble and Bumble BB uh, Thickening Dry Spun Finish. And what this is, is a product to give you volume in your hair when you don't necessarily have it. And it also helps me when I feel like it's time to wash my hair but I might not be able to for whatever reason. If I, especially if I'm on like a weekend trip or something like that and it's that day to wash your hair because you've been in the pool or you've been outside and it rained, whatever, and you don't want to. I find that once I curl my hair, I just lift up sections of my hair and spray this in there. Just give it a good fluff and you get a ton of volume. So. And this does not make your hair crisp either because it's not a hairspray. So I don't know how to explain what this product is, but it's good. So that is it for my 2015 favorite products. Thank you guys so much for joining me. Um, don't forget to give this a big thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. And I will talk to you very soon. Bye.